Well, good afternoon. Uh, yesterday we had signal issues again, and uh, a big chunk of it got cut off, cut out toward the end, and I, I just had to kind of wrap it up. So we, we only did verse 26 yesterday. I'm going to back up to verse 18 and just bring us bring us up to context in chapter 6 of the book of the prophet Jeremiah book of the prophet Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 6 beginning in verse 18 therefore hear ye nations and know O congregation what is among them hear O earth behold I will bring evil upon this people even the fruit of their thoughts because they have not hearkened unto my words nor to my law but rejected it to what purpose cometh there me to me incense from Sheba and the sweet came from a far country your burnt offerings are not acceptable nor your sacrifices sweet unto me therefore thus saith the Lord behold I will lay stumbling blocks before this people and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them the neighbor and his friend shall perish Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses, set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof, our hands wax feeble, Anguish hath taken hold of us in pain, as of a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. Verse 26 was as far as we got yesterday because of the uh, signal issues. Verse 26, chapter 6 of Jeremiah. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son. Most bitter lamentation. For the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. Through chapter, the midpoint of chapter 4, God has begged Judah to return to him, and the nation has refused. However, he stops every now and then from then on while he's pronouncing judgment in chapter 5, the last half of chapter 4, chapter 5, and now through most of chapter 6, he'll pronounce judgment, and then will come a few verses that where he says, I'm willing to take any of you who will come to me, any of you, you return to me, and I will rescue you. I will save you. Any individual person. I won't save your country. Too late for that. But I will rescue you personally. And chapter 6, where he paused to say that, was in verse 16, where he said, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. This is part of Jeremiah's beginning of his lamentations. They won't do what God says. God says, Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, Jeremiah says, we will not hearken. Jeremiah is the watchman. He is blowing the trumpet. And in this instant, the trumpet is the word of God. And they will not return. So he is back through the rest of this chapter to pronouncing judgment. And he says, you need to mourn because the spoiler is going to come suddenly upon you. Now, this morning that he's talking about is also a call to repentance. He's asking them again to repent. God is pronouncing grievous judgments. Jeremiah is crying and lamenting over these judgments. 
As a matter of fact, he's got a whole string of them called the Book of Lamentations or the Lamentations of Jeremiah, which follow the Book of Jeremiah, which is some poems he wrote about the fall and destruction and a and I, desolation of Jerusalem. But see in verse 26, where we left off yesterday, he's telling people to gird themselves with sackcloth and wallow in ashes and mourn as for an only son, a bitter, bitter mourning. That is humbling yourself before God. That is forgetting everything that the world has to offer, concentrating on the Lord God and saying, I'm sorry, man, I messed up. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to fix it, God. You fix it. You see, that's what repentance is. True confession is just telling God that he's right and you're wrong and humbling yourself and allowing him to fix you. It is a point that most people never get. It is the clarion call of the Bible. Repent and trust God. Verse 27. And he's talking to Jeremiah now. I've set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou may knowest and try their ways. He's God's man at that time. He is the trumpet. He's the tower. He's the fortress. The only way anybody's going to come to God is if they come to Jeremiah. And this is a what they call a type or a prophetic type of the ministry of Christ. You see, no man can come to the Father except by the Lord Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It says, no man can come unto me unless my Father draw him. No man can say that I am the Son of God except the Spirit of God be in him. You see, it's a teamwork deal here. But this time and in this place, Jeremiah is God's man on the scene. And Jeremiah, God tells Jeremiah, they, talking about all of Judah, except for Jeremiah for some reason, and just like and I, I liken it to and, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the same kind of situation. God picked Jeremiah. He was keeping the sheep in Tekoa. Or was it Anathoth? Can't remember. I read this stuff every day and can't remember one thing from another. Yes, he was with the... Uh, he was with the shepherds there and with the priest at, uh, at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. When God came there and told him, I want to make you a prophet, I'll make you a prophet to the nations. You're going to say my words and nobody's going to believe you. I choose you. That's how God works. He could have chosen a king. He could have chosen somebody in the king's palace, but he could have chosen one of the prophets who sat in the office <laughs> of, uh, of Isaiah, but he didn't. He didn't choose. And we don't hear any more about Huldah now. Huldah was the prophetess that was married to Shalom and, and had the office of prophet during that day. But it was when King Josiah was a very young man and doing the math, I would expect that the revival that he instituted probably started 15 or more years before the time that Jeremiah is preaching the second sermon in the court of King Josiah or to the court of King Josiah. The prophets, the priests, the princes, all the rich people. Perhaps King Josiah himself heard the words. They were certainly relayed to him. Jeremiah was the man. He was the one that God worked through at the end of Jerusalem's torment. He says, "They are." God tells Jeremiah, they are all grievous, revolters 
walking with slanders. They revolt, they turn against, they rebel. Against what? Against God. Against the Word of God. Against the invitation of God to avoid destruction and escape. To come to Him and trust Him. They have rebelled against that. They walk with slanders. That means that they lie about everything. And uh, nobody's good enough for them. You know, every now and then you go to church or go to work with people, they're always they're always maligning everybody else. And nothing is ever their fault. These are the slanders. These are the kind of people that are revolting against God and Judah. They are brass and iron. What do you make out of brass and iron? Weapons and shields and arrowheads and all that kind of stuff. You had the age of brass and the age of iron and the age of steel. This is at a period of time when the age of brass was becoming the age of iron. And there was a mixed amount of weapons. So he's talking about weapons that they make to hurt with. They are all corruptors. How are they all corruptors? Because they have been corrupted by their own sin. They have allowed themselves to be tempted and led by the world, the flesh, and the devil, and now they're off a whoring after other gods and ignoring the God of their fathers. The only God there is. He says, I'm, I'm the God, I'm the Lord God. He says, there is none else like me. Is there any other God? I don't know of any. I've never seen one. Paul said that the people, that, that, that the, the gods that they worship, and they worship idols, they're just worshiping devils. You know, all of these statues and stumps and posts and pictures and, and uh, engravings and trees and totem poles and whatever you got. They only represent devils. There are active beings behind those, but they're not gods. They're fallen angels. They're devils. It's the work of the devil. He makes his ministers appear as the ministers of light, according to the New Testament. And uh, as a matter of fact, he's so bright that he's got to wear shades. That's what got him thrown out of heaven. And the scripture tells us in Ezekiel 28, that, that he was deceived and confounded and led astray by his own beauty. That's what caused Satan to fall. He was just so good looking, he couldn't believe that he wasn't the same as God. But you see, the only glory that Satan had was the glory reflected from the, phone, from the throne of God by which he stood. He was the sheriff that covereth his pipes his, his 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 breathing his whole body was like a pipe organ it was musical when he talked it was beautiful and he was perfect in all his ways until the day that iniquity was found in him that's who you worship when you don't worship the only god there is the lord god of israel represented in the purpose, in the person of Jesus Christ. The only way you can know Christ, the only Christ you can know is the Christ revealed in the Word of God, the Holy Bible. It is a book about Jesus. It is a book about Jesus Christ from Genesis 1-1 until Revelation 22-21. It's all about Jesus. There is nothing else except Jesus. If there's anything else in the world for you except Jesus, then you need to get on your knees and come back to him immediately or come to him for the first time, however it was. Verse 29, they're all corrupted. Verse 29, the bellows are burned. Jeremiah says, the lead is consumed with the fire. The bellows burn you. Whoosh, 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 is what they used to separate the dross from the gold and the silver. And the lead is consumed away. It melts away. The founder melteth in vain. Because see, all it's getting is dross. 
there's no silver, gold, or precious stones that come out the other end of the whoosh, 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 of the heat. We're talking about the fire of the furnace of the blacksmith of the smith that uh, that refines the gold and the silver and the precious stones. The dross is consumed. The founder, it just keeps on melting in vain because there's nothing good inside the dross. There is nothing to redeem it. There is no payment for the work. It's like trying to drive fence posts all day long with your fist. You ain't got nothing to drive with and it ain't going to go down in the ground. You know, without a post hole digger or a kachunka, a T pole driver. If you use one of those, you know how tough it is. But without a without a post driver or a post hole digger, you sunk. Well, it's the same deal. The smelter, the founder, is working. But nothing is produced except the dross, the waste. There is no gold or silver behind the waste, just waste. The bellows are burned, the lead is consumed to the fire, the founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. You see, it was very true that one bad apple will ruin the whole barrel. And as Paul wrote, a little leaven, little bit of leaveneth, leaven, la, 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 a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> See, she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah. He strikes his fist against the post and still insists he sees the ghosts. <clears throat> a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. When the wicked are not taken from among us, they poison all of us. They need to be killed. They need to be in jail. They need to be in insane asylums, but they don't need to be walking the streets. When you let the wicked walk among you, you have a polluted and corrupted land just like we have here because the wicked walk among the just. God will not allow that <laughs> to last. He won't he will permit it. And that's why he's destroying us now, in case you haven't noticed. The last thing Jeremiah says in verse 30, reprobate silver shall men call them. Well, it means it's silver that's no good. It's not even silver. You put the you put the silver. You think you're putting the silver and the lead and the what is will be the dross. You think you're putting it in the furnace, but there's no silver left over after just the lead, just the dross. Now lead has many uses, but buying bacon and biscuits ain't one of them. That ain't worth nothing compared to the silver. So they call what's left over reprobate silver. There's no good in it. There's just no good in it. It's corrupted. Why? Because the Lord hath rejected them. Listen, if you're within sound of my voice, the Lord has not rejected you yet. Come to him now. Commit your life to Christ. Repent of your sin. Believe the gospel. The gospel is this, that Jesus was crucified and suffered and died for your sins. According to the scriptures, he was dead and he was buried according to the scriptures. And he rose the third day according to the scriptures. He's alive then. He's alive now. He's alive forevermore. And he can and will save you if you ask him to. You must come to him. Come to him now because he's coming soon. He's coming to judge the quick and the dead. You need to get straight with Christ now. Don't put it off.